I am Ms. Lenalyn P. Lopez, your teacher presenter today, and our topic for today is all about the chemical sanitizers. So are you ready to study with me? Are you ready to learn today? And we have our objective for today, clean and sanitize kitchen tools and equipment by following the manufacturer's instruction. I know you are very excited to our discussion for today, but before we begin, let's have a short motivational activity. So this one is entitled, Guess the Picture Behind. Alright, so are you ready? Are you excited? Okay, so let's proceed. Okay, again, so give me a color that you like me to open first. Color? Red or the shade of red. Let's open all the shade of red. Alright, so do you have an idea what is this? Okay, let's open another shade of color. The shade of violet. Wow, we're getting closer again. So, do you know already what is the picture behind? Very good. The correct answer is cleaning. Good job, students. Next word. Our next picture. Give me a color that you would like me to open first. Okay, let's open the shade of blue. Next one, the shade of red. Oh, can you find out what is the picture behind? Not yet? Okay, let's open another one. The shade of green. You got it right! The correct answer is kitchen! Hooray students! Good job! So now, let's move on with our discussion for the day. So I hope that you enjoyed our motivational game. Before we begin with our lesson, let us unlock some difficult words that we may encounter throughout the lesson. So we have word number one, deteriorates. Everybody say, deteriorates. Very good. So, deteriorates means to become worse. Next word, we have concentration. Everybody say, concentration. Very good. Concentration means a large number or amount of something in the same place. Every restaurant must have an appropriate testing kits to measure the chemical sanitizer concentration. To accurately test the strength of your chemical sanitizer, one must first determine what kind of chemical sanitizer is being used. It's either chlorine, iodine, or quaternary ammonium. Test kits are not interchangeable, so you must check with your chemical sanitizer to be certain that you are using the correct kit. The appropriate test kit must then be used throughout the day to measure chemical sanitizer concentration. And now we are going to discuss the three chemical compounds used as a sanitizer. So we have number one, the chlorine, the second one, the iodine, and the third one is the quaternary ammonium. So, these three chemical sanitizers are being used using the measurement of parts per million or the PPM. So, that is used to measure the concentration level of this sanitizer in water. So, let us begin with chlorine. So, chlorine is a kind of sanitizer which works for 50 ppm or 50 parts per million in the water between 75 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And then, 
the contact time needed for the chlorine to work in water is 7 seconds. And this chemical sanitizer need to expose to the object you want to sanitize for 7 seconds. So, advantages of chlorine. So, chlorine is effective on a wide variety of bacteria. It is highly effective, not, not affected by hard water, and generally inexpensive. So the disadvantages of this chlorine is it is corrosive, irritating to the skin. Effectiveness decreases in large amount of pH or water. Deteriorates during storage and when exposed to light. Dissipates rapidly, loses activity in the presence of organic matter. We'll be using the following. A sanitizer bucket, chlorine, water, chlorine test strips. For most brands of bleach, 50 to 100 parts per million comes out to about one teaspoon of bleach per gallon of water, or about one capful for every three gallons of water. However, since many things can affect the concentration, always make sure to use a test strip to ensure the concentration is between 50 and 100 parts per million. And now that we have our sanitizer set up and it's at the right concentration, we can use it to wipe food spills and other food contact surface. And one more tip, if you're making multiple buckets, you can make a big batch in the three compartment sink and scoop it out into your buckets. Next, we have the iodine. So the iodine, we need 12.5 to 25 parts per million in water that is at least 75 degree Fahrenheit. The contact time of this solution to a surface is 30 seconds. So this is a bit longer than the chlorine. The, chlor the chlorine only needs 7 seconds contact time in the surface while iodine needs 30 seconds to completely destroy the bacteria. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of using iodine solution? So the advantages of this iodine solution, you will see if this is already effective when it forms color brown during the testings. It indicates its strength. It is not affected by hard water. It is less irritating to the skin and the activity is not rapidly lost even in the presence of organic matter. What are the disadvantages of iodine solution? So, its effectiveness decreases in large amount of pH. It should not be used in water that is 100 degree Fahrenheit or hotter. And it might discolor the equipment and the surfaces. So, you need to follow the 30 seconds contact time to avoid the discoloration of the surfaces and the equipment. So in this video, I will show you how to test the chemical concentration of this solution. So as I have said earlier, that the strength of this iodine solution can be measured when it turns to color brown. It means that this is already effective as, as a chemical sanitizer. This is a demonstration of the iodine sanitizer drop count test kit using endpoint ID procedures. The first step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to collect an accurate sample. The smallest change in sample size will lead to inaccurate results. Before collecting your sample, it's important to rinse the vial three times with the sample to be tested. This minimizes the chance of contamination from a previous titration. To get an accurate sample, hold the vial close to eye level. Accuracy is very important during this step. Once you feel you have an accurate sample, place the vial on a level surface and bend down to eye level to verify. When performing a drop count titration, a white background can provide contrast to better see the color changes. A cabinet tray or a white paper towel can provide that contrast. Once you have collected an accurate sample, the next step is to add three drops of sulfuric acid 
The bottle contains a dropper tip, so it's important to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each reagent, swirl the vial to make sure the sample is properly mixed. The next step is to add 5 drops of starch indicator solution 1%. The bottle contains a dropper tip, so it's important to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each reagent, swirl the vial to make sure the sample is properly mixed. The sample should turn dark brown to dark blue if iodine is present. The next step is to perform the titration using sodium thiosulfate titrant. It's important to make sure you have the proper titrant and the proper sample size for this titration. Add the titrant one drop at a time, swirling the vial after each drop to properly mix the sample. You must count the number of drops during this step. The bottle contains a dropper tip, so it's important to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. Continue counting the number of drops and swirling the vial after each drop. The titration is complete when the sample turns clear or returns to the sample's original color. Next, we have the quaternary ammonium. So the quaternary ammonium, you need 200 parts in a million in a water of at least 75 degree Fahrenheit. So the contact time needed for the solution is 30 seconds. Again, the contact time for a surface or an equipment to be thoroughly cleansed or sanitized by this chemical solution is 30 seconds. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of this chemical? So what are the advantages? Quaternary ammonium is non-toxic. It is odorless, colorless, non-corrosive, non-irritating, full to heat, and relatively not affected by organic matter. And it is also active in a wide variety of pH. So it does not lose its strength or effectivity even in a large amount of water. But the quaternary ammonium has its own disadvantages, which is number one, it is slow in destruction of some microorganisms. Quaternary ammonium is slow in destruction of microorganisms as compared with chlorine and iodine. And this is also not compatible with all kinds of equipments and surfaces. So among the three, which one do you think is more effective? And not just more effective but also less expensive. So you choose the right chemical which suits your budget and your kitchen. So to test the concentration and effectivity of quaternary ammonium, I will show you this video how to test the quaternary ammonium. We are going to discuss one of the most commonly used sanitizers in a food establishment, quaternary ammonium sanitizer, also known as quad. We will be using the following, a sanitizer bucket, a towel, test strips, water, and a quaternary ammonium solution. Let's get started. First, we're gonna mix our sanitizer solution. Many of you may be more familiar with this setup, which dispenses pre-mixed quad. Now that we have mixed our solution, we're going to use a test strip to make sure it's right. This is important because if it is too low, it won't kill the germs. But if it's too high, it won't evaporate right and might end up in our food. Some test strips require a quick dip Others require 10, 30, or even 90 seconds, depending on the brand. We've used two types of test strips here. As you can see, it reads 200 ppm, or parts per million, which is the right concentration according to this label. So let's move on on how to read the manufacturer's instruction. So I have here an example of a bleaching solution which is the Clorox. So at the back of the, this Clorox, you will find out that there is an instruction on how to use this product. Always 
look at the instruction on how to use a chemical solution to avoid misconceptions and to avoid irritating our skin to avoid the destructions of our kitchen tools and equipment so as you can see in this picture uh, you will see there the amount of water needed for the solution you are going to prepare it is also written there the amount of concentration for every equipment you are going to clean it is indicated in this table the amount of water needed the amount of concentration and the kind or type of equipment you are going to clean or what place or area in the kitchen you are going to clean so make sure to take a look at this following and take note of this all right so that is the end of our discussion for today now, if you fully understood the lesson, you are now ready to answer your module with the code of CC8Q1 Week 2 D6. So have a nice day everyone. God bless you.